Okay, Scallywags, it's time to get a dose of vitamin graph. There's no time like the present. Now, from my experience, kids are really good at getting one mark out of two or three available for talking about patterns in graphs. And there's more detail needed to get the four marks. You can see here I've got three different lines. I've got um, the red line, the blue line, and the green line. Now for one mark, just talking about how one changes as the other changes is good enough. So in my example here, as the number of sunlight hours increases, the number of pineapples produced also increases. So if you say that, you get a mark. You don't get an extra mark for saying that is a positive correlation. That doesn't go far enough. You need to talk about the rate of change between these two variables. Is it directly proportional or not? Now, you would have met before this equation for a straight line on a graph, y equals mx plus c. Remember, m is the gradient and the plus c is the y-intercept. Now, the blue line and the green line both intercept the y-axis at zero, which I haven't put on. Zero. Happy days. So this plus C term for the blue line and the green line is both zero. I can get rid of it. It's zero. It doesn't matter. It's not there. Now for direct proportionality, what that means is as you double one quantity, does the other double? Is that constant? Is that M value the same for all of the points that you have plotted? So for my green line here, I started off with two sunlight hours producing 20 pineapples. If I double my sunlight hours to four, does the number of pineapples produced double? 20 to 40. Yes, yes it does. This is a directly proportional relationship. Let's look at the blue line now, okay? So for the blue line, maybe this was a different field. I started off with one sunlight hour producing 20 pineapples. If I double the number of sunlight hours, does the number of pineapples produced double? Two is 40. So yes, that's also a directly proportional relationship. Directly proportional. So you need to say that to get the second mark. Think, does it double? Does it double when I increase the number of uh, sunlight hours by a factor of two? Does the number of pineapples increase by the same factor? Now you could say, does it triple? And then does the pineapples triple? As long as it's the same factor each time, the same constant each time for the gradient, then that is directly proportional. Okay, let's look at the red line now. So. Initially, with no sunlight hours, 20 pineapples were produced. Seems like this might be some questionable data. After one sunlight hour, 40 pineapples were produced. Okay, pineapple land here. After two sunlight hours, about 58 or so pineapples were produced. So that's not double 40. This is not a directly proportional relationship. So this is not directly proportional because it doesn't go through the origin it's very easy to tell that it's not going to be directly proportional for a directly proportional relationship it needs to be a line it needs to be a linear relationship but also it needs to go through the origin the gradient needs to go through the origin otherwise it's not a directly proportional relationship so in my examples here the blue line and the green line are both directly proportional but the red line is not now if you were conducting an experiment and you were expecting whatever thing you were doing with that red line uh, to give you a directly proportional relationship and it doesn't then that's a big clue that you've got some sort of systematic error what do I mean by a systematic error? A systematic error is something that affects every single one of your results and isn't random, like a change in the light levels in the room 
or a draft going by as you're measuring the rate of transpiration from a plant, for example. A systematic error is something that affects every single one of your results. So it could be that you didn't make sure that your scales were set to zero, for example, and that affected each and every single one of your results. So this here could show a source of error in your experiment if you were expecting the relationship you were testing to be directly proportional. So to recap, if it isn't a linear relationship and it doesn't go through the origin, then it's not directly proportional. If it is, like in the case of my blue gradient or my green gradient, then you need to say that. If you've not been presented with a graph and you've just presented with a table of data, then do a couple of sums with it. Is the difference between them the same each time? Does it go from 20 to 40 to 60 to 80 as the other variable goes from 2 to 4 to 6 to 8? Does Check that doubling thing. It's the easiest way to tell. But this purple line on my whiteboard now is not a directly proportional relationship. You can see here that it looks initially like it's directly proportional because we've got a linear segment going through the origin, but after a while that changes. Now if you face a question that's three marks on this, it's likely that it might combine these elements. You might have a straight section initially where you can say, well, it was initially directly proportional, uh, but then something changed here. This kind of looks like uh, a factors affecting the rate of photosynthesis graph, for example. A final thing to say, I've obviously made up these uh, variables to put on the x and y axis. And the reason that I've done that and not use actual scientific variables or given an example from your course is I want to get across that it really doesn't matter what's on the axis. I could have put potatoes versus wine gums here and the principles remain the same. What you've got to do and how you've got to analyse the data remains the same. It really doesn't matter what's on the x and the y axis at all. OK, so I've got uh, some new variables on these axes now. I've got subscribers to Mr. Hull Physics um, compared to Hull Happiness. And as you can see, as the number of subscribers to Mr. Hull Physics increases, Hull Happiness increases. And this is a directly proportional relationship. And what I'm saying here is if you found these useful, I'm clearly enjoying making these videos and it's given me something to do in this period of isolation. So if you know someone that you think will find this useful or you've got a Facebook page where you think this could go in, um, then please, please, please pass the message on. Thank you.